So I am right. happy to talk to uh, Sir Richard Sandel today, uh -huh. who is <laughs> professor uh, at the University London and uh, at the University College in London. And uh, so uh, the first question would be, um, how does your talk fit into the ongoing discussion that economic policy should be more based on empirical <laughs> regularity? Ah, ah, well, I completely agree with that statement. Um, yeah, I, I guess my worry about economics generally is that it's not uh, wedded deeply enough in uh, empirical research, and that's empirical evidence. Uh, that has changed quite a bit, and that was the kind of nature of my talk. But it could change even more, because the uh, amount of evidence available now is huge, and it's just a matter of using it well. And uh, I think the idea of the work I'm doing is to kind of think a little bit more uh, deeply about uh, how you best use uh, evidence in in variety of different policies. Okay. Um, and how do you do? Uh, how do you deal with uncertainty when interpreting the results of your uh, studies and give like? Uh, policy recommendations? Yeah, that's a very good question. <laughs> so that's true in macro or micro or anything where your uh, estimation... I, know, I guess there's two, uh, two kind of points to that, uh, as usual in this kind of world. One is for a given model you've estimated, you have to worry about um, the sampling error. And then there's the whole issue of model uncertainty. Have you really approached the data with the right model. Uh, it's not easy to really answer the way you should deal with the uncertainty there, but you should allow for those two aspects. I guess the way I tend to think about it is um, is, is to show uh, how well the model tends to work over a number of different scenarios. Micro models are much better versed <laughs> for that, because in macro you just get one time period, one time to go make a mistake or not. When you've got uh, large numbers of individual agents, individuals in an economy, and say you can separate them into groups or they've been facing different kinds of reforms, it gives you a bit more, um, a bit more uh, ability to check whether the, you know, how uncertain you are about the model, and also getting the model right. But yeah, it's important to point that out. I mean, typically, whenever we do a policy uh, analysis of a, a tax reform, we would give, um, well, here's what we suggest the reform looks like. This would be the impact, and put some confidence intervals around it. Uh, but typically, that's just sampling error. It's not. Uh, it doesn't really have all the detail of the different models you've thought through in in that comparison. That's uh, and that's something you really uh, have to do by looking, uh, looking across different groups, different models. Okay. So um, coming back to your rather to your talk, yeah. um, what are the the key margins you have to address when when like speaking about labour supply, yeah. and what what are the difference between yeah. like uh, female labour supply and male? Yeah. I guess the, the main point of the key margins was that um, you should always look in the data to see if there's something going on first. Mm -hmm. You can spend a lot of time. In fact, you know, microeconomists are very, very subject to this criticism. If you look at uh, the old literature on labour supply, uh, what it looked at was employment of, of prime age men. And for a long time, the answer was there's not much effect, mm -hmm. and therefore there's not much effect of tax policy. But you saw that picture I put up. You know, prime age men, they, the, it, 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 between 30 and 50, their working behaviour is very similar across economies with quite different tax, tax rates. The likelihood of them responding very much. Where they respond is um, it, 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 those kinds of individuals. Um, high educated men or, or, or just educated men generally is on their pattern, their occupations and the length of their career when they retire. You can see that when they leave school and go to work and when they retire. So both ends of the life cycle are, are important there. And that's a, a feature that I made something of. One thing you find is that, you know, taking time off work, uh, at least for any length of time, or taking a job that seems to be also the case if you take a part-time job, 
which is often the case, uh, then uh, that can have a kind of serious impact on your earnings. Actually, in our model, the uh, the women we're kind of looking at here, we we make we we design a model so they take account of that so they realize that that will still happen but of course um they have to look after their children and this construct and there are and uh, some some women uh, will choose to do that or or will end up doing that and so that's just reflected in the data and that can explain quite a lot we think of uh, of gender differences in earnings and uh, and wages more generally but there's a lot more to be uh, done on okay. that. So, um, what do you think? Um, what quest? Uh, what features would uh, an optimal integrated tax and benefit <laughs> system uh, have? Like this is a very broad question, yeah. obviously, no, no, to, to give the right incentives yeah. for women. That's a good question. <laughs> that's a, li a life career. <laughs> we did do, I should advertise our little Merle's review, because we spent quite a lot of time on that, as well as on all other taxes, actually, including, including corporate taxes, trying to get what we know now is the best thing. Um, of course, you know, you learn, and the economy changes, you know, we... The, the period of austerity and the financial crisis has changed things a little bit, and uh, and that's that's important. So you have to uh, update things from them. But broadly speaking, uh, you know, one thing that you learn very quickly is that welfare systems are often quite complicated, mm -hmm. and there's no, really no need for that. And so the first thing, which is an old idea, is that um, integrating, as you say, and simplifying is not such a bad thing. Um, but simplification in its own right is not necessarily a good idea. You know, I mean, the, the kind of flat tax idea uh, might be extremely simple. It may not be the uh, optimal tax. Optimality and simplicity don't necessarily go together. Uh, but you can reduce, of course, complexity in the tax system. The key thing is really to have a system that people really understand. Uh, if they don't understand it, then it's very hard to think about how you should redesign it optimally. So that that's the, the, the first thing. The other thing is just to look around, you know, it's a matter of first principles almost, is look around. If, if effective tax rates are really very high, you might worry about behavior being affected by that. When we looked at the UK system, and I'm pretty sure this is true in many other systems, um, it's not that there were effective tax rates of 60 or 70 percent. There were effective tax rates of 95 percent, 99 percent. So these are very high effective tax rates coming through the welfare and tax system, and they can cause some really odd distortions in behavior, and they're the ones we went for first. Of course, you always want to worry um, that a high tax rate might be, uh, might be distorting behavior. Um, but, of course, they're often there for good reason once you've got rid of the little oddities. You know, they're there for, re for redistributing income. And so you've always got that trade-off there. And, uh, and the only way, really, to answer that one is to know about uh, response elasticities. And that's really the heart of the econometric work, just trying to figure out how people do respond. Uh, because you know that, in, in general, the dead weight, the loss, the welfare cost of a tax is going to be higher generally if uh, if people are more responsive to it because uh, in trying to avoid it you know you raise less revenue that's one simple way of putting it so um, you want to bring all that econometric work on measuring responses together with uh, with the um, with trying to make the tax system uh, simpler to understand if you do that then you're well on the way uh, mm -hmm. to um, to to getting the thing right